What's up, everybody? Today we're going to be talking about Demon Hunter in World of Warcraft patch 8.3. It just came out. This is the year 2020. It's January. These are the talents that I'm running for PvP and for um, dungeons, raiding, different stuff. There's a, a very limited build that you could do with Demon Hunter right now. But uh, I'll tell you right now, dude, he's a monster. He's a beast. And I will absolutely delete you and your entire team by myself with just a little bit of healer on me. I might not even need a healer, depending on how good you guys really are. Check this out, baby. All right, jumping over here into it. Uh, the very first talent that you're going to use for your 99 talent, you can do one of two ways, and these are going to this is going to determine how you play your Demon Hunter. You can play Blind Fury, which is going to make your I Beam generate um, energy for you or fury for you, so that um, every time you cast I Beam, it's going to fill your bar up, and you're able to spam Chaos Strike. It's a very slow build, but it does cleave very hard. So if you're pulling tons and tons of ads in big pools and they're every like 30 or 45 seconds them pools this is a great talent to run for that other than that if you want single target dps for pvp for running dungeons for just an all-around build it's going to heal you and you're going to be able to spam chaos strike more often you're going to run demonic appetite the next uh, talent you're going to run for level 100 is immolation aura the other two don't even use them there's no reason for it immolation aura is your go-to the next one is for 102 is going to be trail of ruin this is your go-to the other two are useless don't even run them trail of ruin puts a dot for the last um slash of your blade dance so you get bleeds on rogues you can get stuff out of out of um um, stealth that's hiding uh, you're able to tag different things and keep your DPS rolling with trail of ruin and your Azerite traits and different pieces of gear make it bleed a lot harder so this is a wonderful awesome awesome very strong talent uh, the next one that I run is soul rending now depending on how you are playing whether or not it's in a dungeon or PvP if you're playing in PvP and you know that you're about to get focused and you're about to take a lot of burst from these classes and you know that you're going to be able to absorb it or you're going to be focused run nether walk because as they dump the burst into you you pop your nether walk you mitigate 80 90 percent of their burst helps your healer out you guys will probably win the fight after that because they dumped all their stuff into nether walking you or they're going to be forced to hard switch during their burst from you to somebody else that they're already not set up on so nether walk is a great talent for absorbing burst from classes and um Arena. This really isn't a talent that you want to run for Battlegrounds. You want to run Soul Rending that's in Battlegrounds or anything that has to do with PvE. Use Soul Rending. Uh, your leech is increased by 10% overall in a baseline. And then when you meta, it's further uh, increased by another 10%. So you have 20% healing every time that you're in meta. Uh, the next talent is your 106 talent. It is First Blood. Don't run anything else. Run First Blood. There's no reason Dark Slash and Cycle of Hatred are useless. I'm telling you, I don't even know why we have these talents. It's 2020, World of Warcraft should be fixing these things so that we have different choices to run different builds. The next one, now there's one of two talents that you could run here. Um, I run Fell Eruption. I don't ever change it. This is my go-to talent because it gives me a ranged off stun. So I'm able to catch a druid or a mage or something that's trying to range. because now you have two glaive charges that's in there so instead of spamming chaos strike you're going to be trying to throw master of the glaive on there and this is more for training down um druids or shamans that are ranging you constantly that way you give them some type of a snare and you're able to help them chances are though that you're going to be running with the dk probably in arena so that you have a slow so that you're able to get to them or a monk that way that they have and you're not spamming this with another added um, ability into your rotation that makes your simple ability, uh, rotation now be thrown off because you have an extra glaive charge so it's up to you if you want to use it if you feel like it fills out your rotation better and it's for you run it if not just use full eruption and of course at 110 these two they're not even viable demonic is the only go-to talent it's just like the other talent trees that are in here 110 demonic nothing else um, for your PvP talents, Gladiator's Medallion, that is your go-to. You want to be able to use your trinket on your command. Sometimes you want to sit a stun. 
you don't want to pop it and blow it because you were able to live through that stun. So you want to use your trinket when you need it. So Gladiator's Medallion is your go-to. Now, Cover of Darkness, this is going to be something that you're going to change out for if you know, like you're running Netherwalk and Cover of Darkness, well, you could Cover of Darkness and then Netherwalk or Netherwalk into a Cover of Darkness, and that'll just further help your absorption for when they're trying to burst you in Arena. Um, I use this if they're dropping on my uh, healer real bad. I could go and stand on top of them if they have them stun block, drop a Cover of Darkness on them, and it'll help him mitigate the damage that they're dumping into my healer. That's why I run Cover of Darkness. If I'm not running Cover of Darkness, I'll run Detainment or Solitude. I run Detainment if they're running two, um, if I'm running with another DPS and we're facing two DPS, or if I know that I have a mage that's with me or a monk and they're able to stun something or keep it off in the side, and then I can hit them with my Detainment and imprison them and they can't break it. So it's just another CC chain that's linked into them for helping to get a kill that's in PvP. The next one is Rain from Above. I don't ever take this talent out. I don't care what Demon Hunter tells you to move this one and take the other ones out. If they tell you to take Rain from Above out, they're not a real Demon Hunter and they're not playing their fucking Clash right. This thing is brokenly OP. Now, DKs can grip you when you jump up. They have to be a decent DK that you're fighting so that they'll, they'll fuck up your Rain from Above. They'll grip you back down. And um, a Shaman can hex you in the air. And I believe that a Mage can poly you or do something that'll lock you out while you're in the air. Now, those are the three classes that are able to do something while you're raining from above. Chances of them getting it off as you are just getting into the air, though, is it's a very narrow window, and they have to be really knowing that you're about to rain from above on them. So what I do when I use rain from above, I use it offensively more than I do defensively. Because defensively, if they're dumping on you already and you pop rain from above, they're just going to stand below you or LOS you and then come right back to where you're going to land at and then nuke you. So trying to use this defensively, it'll buy you a few seconds if they don't grip you down or they don't stun you while you're in the air you get an extra few seconds you might be able to kill them if they're low or if your teammate you know is able to help you get something off but offensively rain from above man i'll run in there dude and i'll i'll pop my cds and then i'll jump up in the air and pop rain from above and fell lance the shit out of my target and they're ranging me and running from me which means that by the time i land i'm gonna run over to them and i'm gonna nuke them I mean, they're they're popping cooldowns to get away from me from rain from above because you're hitting them for between 30 and 42,000 depending on if they're cloth or leather or plate. So you get between 6 and 10 cast off of rain from above, dude. You could almost 100 a guy in a single rain from above. That's how strong this talent is. So use it offensively. Stop using it defensively. Use it defensively as an oh shit, I'm gonna only live for another three to five seconds when I pop this. Understand that that's probably gonna happen to you when you use this defensively. If you use this cooldown offensively though, it's going to change your rotation in a way that you feel about it. So try it, believe me, it's fucking strong. All the rest of these talents, they're nil and void, they don't mean nothing. The next thing that we're gonna talk about is um, your AZ talents and traits. Now, um, I run with I-Beam, I will pop my I-Beam and then I will go right into a focusing Iris if I am cleaving down a lot of targets. So if I'm running keys and I know that there's a lot of ads and shit like that, I will run my I-Beam so that after my I-Beam is done fully um, casting, I generate haste off of it, okay? And that's going to be from your AZ talents that are on your head, shoulders, and your chest piece. You want to stack Furious Gaze? and on Dolting Tides uh, as much as you can. Furious Gauge, uh, it increases your haste after you fully channel an I-Beam. The reason why we run um, I-Beam the way that we do with the haste is because of Demonic Appetite. If we run, run Blind Fury, you are at risk in PvP to get kicked. And it's such a long channel, if you get kicked, you're not going to get the haste benefit from your AZ traits. So we run Demonic Appetite so that we're able to spam um, Chaos Strike, and uh, by spamming Chaos Strike, you have a chance to generate a Soul Fragment off of spamming Chaos Strike. When you consume said Soul Fragment, you'll get 30 more Fury, so you're able to hit them again with Chaos Strike. So basically, you get two Chaos Strikes for the cost of one from running this, and it helps you to be able to not be kicked so that you get your AZ talents so that your Furious Gaze kicks in. Now, the next one that you're going to run after that 
is going to be chaotic transformation. You need one of these in either your head, your shoulder, or your chest, so that every time that you do eye beam, your blade dance and your um, eye beam is then reset again. Okay, so the cooldown of your eye beam, your metamorphosis, and all that stuff, it all gets reset. So you could eye beam meta and then eye beam again. You get a double eye beam. The next thing that you want to stack is going to be Eyes of Rage. Eye Beam deals an additional 1920 damage. Consuming a Soul Fragment reduces the, the cooldown of Eye Beam by 0.7. So every time you consume a Soul Fragment with Chaos Strike, you're cooling down your Eye Beam again. And every time that you kill something, it's going to generate a, a lesser soul fragment, which is going to then cool down your eye beam again. So if you get into a big pool of ads and you kill 10 or 15 ads real quick, there's 10 or 15 little soul shards, your eye beam is almost up again. You can almost eye beam back to back to back if the ad pools are, are big enough and they're dying fast enough, okay? Now, the next one that you're gonna be uh, uh, wanting to stack after that is going to be Revolving Blades. So you wanna stack as many Furious Gauge as you can and uh, um, one Chaotic Transformation and then at least one or two Revolving Blades. Now, the reason that we're going to stack Revolving Blades is because we have Trail of Ruin and First Blood. Your first shot from your, your, your Trail of Ruin, or your Blade Dance, I mean, hits them for an extra 22,590. The last uh, hit of your Blade Dance puts a bleed on them, which benefits from your mastery and your haste and your agility that you have that's combined onto your character. And then it's furthermore enhanced by an additional 1740 and it reduces the cost by three fury for every enemy that you hit. So if you've got seven enemies there, you hit each of them, it's going to reduce it by 21. So basically they're going, every time that you use it, it's going to refund you and give you more energy than what you, or fury, than what you spent on revolving blades. So having one of these stacked with Trail of Ruin and First Blood is the best way that I find that is the strongest for my guy. Now I'll go in there and I will pull three and four and 500,000 if I'm running Blind Fury with my I-Beam, okay? On top of running Focusing Iris. So I would go in there uh, with with the, the I-Beam build is what it would be called. I would run Blind Fury would be the only talent that I would change out of all of this, just Blind Fury. And then I would run Focusing Iris with Blind Fury, okay? I know that I'm going to generate a shit ton of shards. I know that my haste benefit after I'm done fully channeling I-Beam is going to make my focusing iris cast faster also because I have the haste benefit from I-Beam. If you don't know what that means, I'll go ahead and change this talent right now. Excuse me, right now, maybe. I'm in combat. All right, so we're gonna get rid of that and put that in there. Now we have our focusing iris on there. We'll run back over here to the training dummies and then I could show you exactly what I mean by how this is going to stack up. So when I'm running focusing iris, even though, even though I'm not running my blind fury talent, I'll run focusing iris if I know that I can get an eye beam off and I'm gonna be splashing on a lot of targets. It's the only time that I run focusing iris because everything else beats it in single target hands down now cleaving this is just a monstrous talent so basically what you're going to do is you're going to eye beam you're going to blade dance and then you're going to focusing iris if you notice right there how fast the channel was that's what it is so meta into an eye beam again and then you're going to just be spamming your chaos strike as you generate your fury every time and you're going to be wanting to move around every time that you uh, chaos charging. strike just a little bit of a side step See, notice right there, I spam it, and what that does is it moves and it helps you to pick up your soul fragments that you're getting as you're spamming uh, your chaos straight. So you want to make sure that your blade dance is used on cooldown so that you are continuously it's keeping up ready that uh, bleed that's on them, okay? Still and then you want to spam chaos strike just as much as you can. It's basically a simple three or four button rotation with a couple other additives that are in it for usage models as you need them for how the fight is changed. Okay, so Immolation Aura, keep that up. Blade Dance, keep that up. Keep your dot on them at all times. And then just spam Chaos Strike, okay? You're gonna be Demonic Bite, Demon's Bite, Demon's Bite, Demon's Bite, Chaos Strike, Chaos Strike, Chaos Strike. You can see I have my shards here. A little bit of a movement left to right. Pick some shards up, charge me right up. I can go right into an I-Beam. I now have haste, 
for the next seven seconds, so I'm going to spam as much as I can and try to fill my Fury Bar up so that I'm able to get these Chaos Strikes off. Spamming Chaos Strike is going to generate some Soul Shards. I'm going to get some more Fury back from some Soul Shards, so I'm just continuing to spam Chaos Strike. You are hurting people extremely hard, uh, extremely bad. You will kill or put them into an oh shit mode if you double I-beam them and you run focusing as right beam. Now, mind you, you have to be able to not get your I-beam kick, not get the Azerite beam kick, meta, and then come back into an I-beam again. There's four different spells right there that you have a chance to get kicked at. That's why when I'm running um, PvP, I will run Crucible of Flame instead of my Focusing Iris. Foc uh, Crucible of Flame, when you're running PvP, is going to be awesome. Okay, it, it gives you a range as a demon hunter. You have a spell that's a range. It, it synergizes with your fell eruption so that you have, you're able to range stun them and get to them. Uh, it, it, it's just a better, better talent for you overall. And after you stack it up and it gets to its third charge, you'll hit people for 100K, 150K. I've hit people for 180 and, and one shot them with it. So it, it all just depends on what cooldowns you have that's going on, what's popping as, as you're using, you know, your concentrated flame. So for PvP, concentrated flame is probably your go-to AV talent that you're going to be replacing your um, focusing iris with. Now there are new talents that came out, okay? And I'll go ahead and, and show you a couple of these. Um, one of them is Breath of the Dying. This one here is still a green talent for me, but it seems to be very strong. At 20%, the cooldown that's on this is only another 15 seconds, so you're using this every 15 seconds. And when this thing lights up and you're at 20%, I hit people for 140,000 with it. Like 120, 112, 102. It's, it's always somewhere in the 102s, 112. I've always seen the weird numbers like that. That's why I'm saying them to you. But this, this talent, even in green, is super strong. So if you didn't want to, you know, run Crucible of Flame and have that third charge all the time, and it's a 30 seconds, so it's a minute and a half before you can get to your third charge. This, theoretically, if you use it on talent, when you charge them up, or when you rank this up, you use this on a, a, a target that has above 80% health, and it'll, cool, it'll make the cooldown be reduced to 15 seconds again. So Breath of the Dying is probably going to be the talent or the AZ trait that will be replacing Crucible of Flame in PvP, but you're going to have to get it to at least its second level so that it'll compete with at least the epic version of Crucible of Flame, okay? So you want this to be at least the, the rank two, the blue version. Rank one is super strong. I run it, I have ran it, and I enjoy running it. I don't mind switching out Crucible for it. I actually feel like it does synergize depending on the fights and you know your cooldowns and how that all, all comes back. Breath of the Dying seems really, really nice. So, just a quick review. We'll just cap this off right here. For PvP, you want Demonic Appetite, Emulation Aura, Trail of Ruin, Soul Rending, First Blood, Fell Eruption, Demonic, okay? The talent that you're gonna switch out for your PvP talents is gonna be Cover of Darkness. You're gonna be changing out Cover of Darkness either for Detainment or Solitude, okay? The other ones are all just pretty well shit. Mana Break, Mana Rift, all this. You're gonna put it underneath them, they know what it is. Any type of anybody that is a healer knows what it is and they're not gonna stand in it. It takes too long for it to go off. You have to stun them and get them to stand in it. It's too much shit that you're trying to synergize to get mana rift and mana break off. So it's just pointless when everything else is so much stronger than it. Now for PVP, there's two, one or for PVE rather, there's one of two ways that you can run this build. You can run Blind Fury, run the, um, I beam build and with this you're not going to be able to spam chaos strike you're not going to heal as much and you're not going to be generating soul shards as much as you would with demonic appetite uh, you will cleave harder you will do larger dps into bigger pulls of ads with blind fury and running your focusing iris okay uh, you have to run focusing iris with your i beam to get it to run right because you want to i beam Get that big long channel of I beam off. After you I beam, you then want to go into a focusing iris because your focusing iris benefits from the haste that you just got from channeling your I beam. All right. Um, so that's if you're cleaving a lot, a lot, a lot of ads. You're gonna end up fighting bosses at the end of it. So chances are 
you know if you don't have if you're not running with a group that has large single target dps but they're not very strong in aoe that's where you would help your group out for running the aoe and then you would lose in the dps race on the boss because your teammates would then come pick up your slack here and where they're slacking on the ad pools is where you would come back and in the end the dungeon would be balanced out for numbers okay um everybody wants to do as much dps as you possibly can especially in bigger keys you want to run single target dps as hard as you can so i'm going to say demonic appetite is your go-to in pve unless what I just said, you're cleaving huge amounts of ads. You have somebody that's on your team that can pick up your single target because you're going to drop in single target. This right here is, is awesome. It, it's your best go-to for single target. And like I said, I paired Demonic Appetite with Crucible of Flame, or I pair it with the new uh, AZ talent that just came out, Breath of the Dying. These are one of the two. I still have to rank this one up. I just got this uh, yesterday, so I haven't had a lot of time to level it up and get into it because there's a lot of other things that are out right now but these are the best talents for pve and for pvp for demon hunter i guarantee you for what I, for the way that i play and the way that i run i i have demon hunters that out gear me and i stomp on them in dps and if they come and pvp me i stomp on them and i don't know if it's because my skill gap in the way that i play demon hunter excels me to be way the hell up here beyond the majority of them but this right here is super strong. I don't care what any other demon hunter says. This works for me. It might be different for you. Now, take that into consideration. I'm not saying that everybody is terrible and everybody's shit is wrong. I'm saying that there's only so many ways that you could build a demon hunter. And there's only so many ways that you could play them. And the way that I play my demon hunter, this makes me excel to where any other demon hunter is with me that even outgears me. I stomp on them in the DPS charts or I'll stomp on them in PvP. It's just the way that it is. It's, I don't know if it's me or because I understand the two builds and how to play them to, to, to their top tier echelons of potential. Uh, if you guys learned anything from this, if you guys found this helpful, please like, subscribe, click the buttons, do all the little stuff that you got to do. Help a fella out. I'm Lockouts, baby. Peace.